Hello again, this is our second conversation, Pat. I have a question, a very simple question. What does colour mean to you? That's a challenging one to respond to, Stephen. Uh, maybe a good way of beginning to answer is I can remember at college uh, reading a book and it was very much a part of the tradition of thinking about uh, visual arts education. Mm -hmm. What do you put in a curriculum? What do you teach people? Mm -hmm. And there had been this ongoing debate between the significance of drawing and design uh, as a very kind of graphic sort of notion of design mm -hmm. and thinking about colour. And I remember reading that and I knew where my sympathies were and it was um, more about being graphic. That made a whole lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the world of colour, however, was something that I, I believe that I... Uh, was challenged by. I always found it a bit tricky. And um, it probably wasn't until I moved back to Rockhampton and met a local artist here who's had a big impact on um, visual arts education and visual arts in the region. And uh, he's a terrific, well, was a terrific colorist. And um, I was able to learn a lot of things from, from Peter and Dan's, including ways of thinking about color. Mm. And uh, Particularly at the Bauhaus, there was a kind of, at the time, there was a lot of educational reforms going on um, mm. in and around the war period uh, in, in Europe, uh, so interwar period. And um, it was sort of like getting back to basics. And mm. things like colour became really key concepts in um, visual art and craft sorts of education systems. Mm. And I think uh, across the 20th century, um, We've borrowed a lot from the Bauhaus and their particular ways of thinking about colour. And Joseph Albers spent quite a bit of time thinking about theories of colour, but also developing his own, but from an experiential point of view. Mm, mm. Uh, when, um, when you first start looking into colour, you come across Goethe and Newton, which is really about optics and physics. Mm. But designers are more keen on how colour relates to colour in a given context. And um, that's right up Alba's alley. And that mm. was far more practical and it made a lot of sense to me. Mm. And uh, I've increasingly become fascinated by colour. To answer your question, it's like its own universe. And mm. it's um, chimerical. It shape shifts all the time. Mm. And you really can't um, pin it down. And it is quite remarkable, the way we relate to colour. And, and I know everybody has their own relationship. For me, it's the... The, the beauty of being able to actually mix those colours. So, so that leads me to the second difficult question is, so what do you teach when you're teaching art? Because, I mean, you're going to grapple with all of these things. You're going to be teaching colour. You're going to be teaching form, content, all of these things. So mm. do you have a teaching philosophy? I think every teacher does. Otherwise, mm. they get out of the profession. Um, there's, there's two... Two ways I might think about that. You've mm. got your curriculum. So you've, you're being employed by somebody to do something. And for that to have merit, it's got to have an underlying backbone, a structure mm. where there's intent that um, generally there's been a collective to determine the potential benefits of that curriculum. So you're referring to that. But you're also referring to your own experiences and you value add to that mm. curriculum and you effectively attempt to bring it alive through your own experiences. How else mm. can you do it? Uh, but um, I think particularly my years teaching in vocational education, I could see that it was very important to also try to work out where the student was coming from in order to be an effective teacher to them, not just a teacher of the curriculum, mm. but a person that um, is a little bit of a pivot in a conversation whereby um, you can help them begin to unwrap what their own interests are and work out, okay, well, this particular student is interested in these dimensions of that craft. And rather than kind of seeing everybody as the same, of course, you, it seems fair in a creative discipline to try to work out how to connect the curriculum to an individual's interest. Mm. Um, and suddenly the whole thing becomes really fun and exciting then if what you're doing is not a performance but a facilitator to try and unlock some kind of uh, dimension within, you know, that student who's there because they're keen. And how do you kind of light that fuse? How do you kind of get them on their own journey mm. where um, then you can kind of stand back 
and maybe provide some subtle guidance, but effectively they're on their way. Another kind of teaching question, do you find that the students coming in, that they're, they're on their journey, obviously, and some will have to acquire certain technical skills. Sure. Uh, some will have a personal project. And then uh, uh, I'm always reminded of this, uh, coming from Norway, everything was Edward Monk. Right, yeah. And the only thing people know about Monk is he painted the screen. Mm. But in the 1890s, he had a project over several paintings. He wanted to paint the grammar of the emotions. Mm. Each painting was an emotion. So do you find that you, one thing is that question, so what does colour mean? Mm. But also, do you find you're teaching people how to work with their emotions as well and how they imprint them? Mm. Probably less so. Mm. Um, being involved in the creative process expects that you're reflective and reflexive. Mm. And I think that's a really critical part of um, developing uh, your own practice. Um, I think it was very much a part of the way we valued early modern art and in particular at that time with the German Expressionists and other mm. um, formative uh, early 20th century movements was uh, valuing of human subjectivity. You know, who's the individual in this strange mm. new world? Uh, I think probably more at the um, latter end of the century there was less of an interest in um, that individual's insight mm. from the point of view of them expressing, you know, outwardly their emotions, yeah. um, warts and all. Uh, and um, in particular, probably like I noted a little bit earlier in our previous conversation, mm -hmm. kind of linking, if you like, those insights about their individual experience, not so much their individuality, but the individual experience of being in, you know, their contemporary world. How do I relate to the world around me? There's, those sorts of things are very similar. Mm. But um, uh, as a teacher, is it about supporting and navigating a student with their emotions? I think less so. Um, mm. It's about um, developing, I think, a range of different skills that they know they can draw upon at any given point in time, whether that be design mm. skills or understanding creative processes. And um, in particular, understanding critical thinking and how it dovetails perfectly into creative mm. thinking. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's less about emotions and probably more about thoughtfulness. My kind of final question, and, and you can see I'm quite interested in that interaction between the teacher and the student. Do you find your students come in and they say, I want to learn this particular skill. Um, I want to learn to um, be a great printer or I want to print this particular kind mm. of things. Do, do you find that in a way the students that are coming through are quite open-minded to borrow your phrase or they're the opposite, they're very fixed and you find you're opening their world? Mm. I'd be making generalisations there. Mm. Um, the cohorts that I've had the pleasure of teaching are very diverse, extremely mm. diverse, which is a part of the beauty of it. Mm. Um, all people from all walks of life, ethnicities and experiences um, are in our studio spaces and it makes for really interesting communities where they begin to mm. have faith in each other, trust each other and um, you know rely on each other to a certain degree and uh, you become a part of that process. Mm. Um, no, I think some of our students are very keen on, they make assumptions that you're there to teach them technical things. Mm. I want to learn how to paint. I want to learn how to draw. And that's the foundation of why I'm here. But of course, um, even mm. though uh, that's important to what it is that we do, there are other things as well that we do. And um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to see the merits of those things. Mm. We were talking about colour earlier. And, uh, you know, initially, you know, I hate being a teacher to start off a, um, a class using theoretical terms. Let's talk about colour theory. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, students mm. kind of start to, you know, to yawn at that point, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But unfortunately, it's sometimes it's it's the terminology, it's the meta language that enables you mm. to think in a way that where you've never been able to think before. And it enables a kind of agility of mind that helps you navigate through that creative process. And before you know it, you're not even thinking 
really about the, the weirdness of the terminology. It's a part of the way that you behave. It mm. becomes central to what you do um, moment by moment in your creative process. Mm. And uh, then, you know, once if you've managed to find a useful way of introducing the terminology, it's only when you begin to apply it does it, you know, does it make sense and does it become a little bit more fun. Otherwise, they're just kind of weird novel ideas, aren't they? Lovely. And uh, I'll, I'll close in a moment and say, for me, what you, you do when I look at your painting and your works of arts, for me, they're, you're a great storyteller. And the reason I say that is because through the mediums you use, you make me dream stories. And I, and I love that. Uh, for me, my personal experience of your art is that I imagine myself in those spaces and those situations in dialogue with you. I love it. Thank mm. you very much, Pat. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Pleasure talking with you. Thank you.